Tonight is sadly the season finale for season three of Green Pillars, but of course we wouldn't leave you without an awesome story. So tonight we're visiting a huge tilapia farm in Lotoka belonging to Aslam Ali and he's got eight fully functional ponds to show us. He's also farming chickens, goldfish, guavas and a few other veggies. So stay with me, that's what's coming up tonight. Tilapia is a farm-raised fish. Because it's not available wild, there are concerns that tilapia is no longer a real fish, but a frankenfish. Tilapia is produced from aquaculture, meaning they're raised in freshwater systems and feed on algae. Producers employ selective breeding techniques to cultivate a strong fish. It's important to know that these strains are developed through selective breeding and not genetic modification. So no, it's actually not a frankenfish. So our tilapia farmer today is none other than Aslam Ali from Lotoka. Putting his massive farm to good use, he now has an impressive eight ponds and he's also farming goldfish, chickens, guavas and a few other veggies. So these are the cages, yeah? yeah. Actually, you have seen us from there. What we do in every Every month actually, sometimes earlier, we have uh, about eight cages like this, which has around uh, nearly one five to two thousand fish inside there. It's quite deep. And this is, this is itself three meter plus pond. So actually pond is not constructed at that level. People do like just a three quarter meter, something like that. Yeah. But this was done for the reason for this cage. So actually, when we take out fish from there, then we grade it here. We have like 80 grams in one, 150 grams in another one, then 200 grams, 300 grams to 500 grams. So separately, like we have separate bias for separate sizes. So like for our neighbor, neighboring, they want in a kg like seven to eight fish for a waitum on Sunday. Yeah. So we have big families like uh, uh, our neighboring here. So we give them 200 or 150 grams. We like, we look uh, with every kind of clients, like small or big, client is client, customer is customer. So some ones one kg, we give them one kg. Some ones eight fish in a kg, we give them eight fish. Some ones 10, we give 10. Some ones 300 grams, three fish in a kg, we give them like that. Okay. So this is the method of separating. And I like, I urge farmers to try this. This is the best option to, actually then, actually we can know the actual amount of fish we have in there. This is the only method you can know. Oh, okay. Like uh, a, a actual big size, like I, like I really know, like I have 1,500, yeah. 300 grams fish here. That is the main reason for that. Originally from Ba, Mr. Ali and his family moved to Lotoka when his father moved over to start cane farming. Even after becoming the successful owner of Quality Auto Spares, Mr. Ali wanted to carry on his father's farming legacy and expand their current farm to what it is today. In 2019, just before the pandemic uh, hit us, uh, we started with this farm. So we just started off with uh, vegetables and all, and then like we were thinking of uh, bringing water from where. Like we couldn't afford uh, with this uh, uh, water, totally water to get things uh, all the time. So we just digged one well actually. So we managed to, with the grace of God, help of God, we managed to find water in our farm actually. So then um, we dig up a pond. Then initially some ideas ca came into our mind that why, why don't we just start something different? Like uh, when I was uh, studying in Arkes, we had uh, three ponds there in Sayaro. So we just started off with it. And then um, I was always thinking like if I could do something like that. So then my brother, Mr. Lai from Tilapia, Fiji, just gave me some advice on how to go in with the ponds and all these uh, digging ponds. And uh, like all this uh, fish credit, uh, whatever I'm doing with Tilapia is uh, all the effort and advice from Mr. Lai, who is from Tilapia, Fiji. And then not, not forgetting my team, uh, who is always here, Mr. Hafiz and like my son Wes is here. So uh, like uh, then we started this in 2019 digging one first pond 
just near where the truck is, just a small one. So from there, then we went on the other side, three points there. We started off with that. Then we came with this one uh, and another one at the back. So like almost all together, we have like uh, nearly 10 points at the moment. And then we started off with goldfish and then we never forgot uh, about this vegetable farming. We'll, we'll still continue it. But uh, one good thing was this, that like uh, from the same water, like which is with the fish and all, with full of minerals, like uh, ammonia and things like, like we don't waste it. So actually we can say it, it's a cycle. So uh, from hydroponic to aquaponic, then uh, aquaculture, agriculture, like all is uh, in it. So like uh, what we do, from the pond we take out the water, we put in the vegetables. So vegetable waste and then other uh, feeds we buy, we give it to our chicken, chicken farm. And the chicken manure then it goes to our vegetables. So it's like we have a complete uh, cycle here. So after sometimes we stop with some st st small vegetable farming. So we have been more with guava uh, and prawns. And the major thing at the moment we are uh, with is like our fish. Uh, we hardly see in Fiji like uh, anybody showing uh, from the pond like a kg, a fish with a kg. Later on, like you can have a look or even wait and see in the picture or size of the fish. We have produced here one kg plus fish, uh, tilapia actually. You'd have to see it to believe it, and yes, we sure do have the proof for you. We put it on the scale. This is uh, one kg actually, near to a kg. This is very hard to see in uh, Fiji ponds. <laughs> yeah, like you can see, see how beautiful it is. You can see the mouth and everything. Unlike in Yeah. Okay. Here, here you can see big heads there. Oh, okay. big head, yeah, like them. you can the big head it's 300 grams plus there 300 it's all there, there like uh, 250 200 300 400 500 600 approximate it's not like uh, something like that but it's uh, when we say approximate like it has been weighed and left there yeah. not just like we just saying with our mouth just like with the way we did the demo on the scale Actually, Elia, Elia, I just left one picture on the Facebook saying that uh, this fish is one kg and somebody just commented, you better leave it on the scale and then do. So we just calibrated that scale and just left it there for the viewers to just see that it's a fact. And if somebody really wants to come in, where well, they are most welcome to do. <laughs> you can see big head also here. So they are, they are over 300 all there. Coming up next, Aslam tells us about his wonderful water source, the correct way to catch tilapia fish, and we get a glimpse of his goldfish farm. Young fish are stocked in farm ponds. They are fed and nurtured until they grow into adults. These fish are then extracted from the pond and either sold to other people for stocking in their private ponds or eaten as food. Rather than using a fishing pole to extract the fish out of the farm pond, sea nets are used to coral the fish in a section of the pond where they can be netted out easily. The sea net should be one and a half times larger than the pond width to aid in coraling the fish. Stretch the sea net out across the width of the pond at one of the pond's edges. Allow the weighted mud line or bottom rope to sink to the bottom of the pond. Grab the net at the bottom and slowly work the mud line up onto the shore. Do this by starting at one end of the net and pulling at the bottom of the net until the mud line is up on the shore. You are coraling the fish entirely in the net. Work the area of the net into a smaller shape by gradually pulling more and more of the net out of the water until the fish are coraled in a small space. Net them out into their holding container. This thing is depends on the water quality. The fish changes its color like this. This all depends on the what kind of water and the irrigation is in your pond. And also food is also the factor. The feed. The feed is also the factor. So I think my brother Mr. Galvin also in regards to this, the CPEC director. CPEC Fiji. 
like uh, we import fish i mean this feed is actually from uh, thailand yeah yeah that's thailand feed actually this is a floating feed so that is the reason for fast growth also but we also initially do with the uh, the basic feeds also but uh, normally we feed with this one okay how often do you feed them twice yeah so Aslam, I wanted to know about your uh, water source. Okay, initially as I told earlier that like uh, we have water down here also, like comes from the ground, but uh, we also dig a dam here, which is a 15 meter dam here. Yeah. So from the day it's nearly two years we have dug this one. So just recently due to this uh, dry weather, we have been filling around, um, around 30,000 a litre almost every second day in each pond. So that is quite 100,000 litre we take it out almost second or third day. So still we have like nearly 10 meter water there reserve. And um, when, when it's a normal, not a dry season, then the water hits up to here. Wow. Yeah, and the thing is that the reason we keep this here, like at some stages uh, there can be some issues in the pond. So we have all in all our dams, we have pumps there like we can empty our pond in one hour time in one hour time i can empty a whole pond and in same hour i can put the new water in the same pond so that is the main reason if there is some kind of uh, uh, mischievous done or anybody have done anything to our water and really we really need to change the water i have got the reserve water to change it within an hour within an hour out from another pump within an hour in from another pump like that so that is a so it's like that we every time we enter something we have to look for exit yeah so that's what we have done like we have to always think for the worst all the time good is there but we have to think for the worst moments yeah so that is our main priority there and this water is never stagnant we also have the water rotating here when during not so drought, drought time then this water is kind of stagnant so we rotate this same water within it if we just on the pump there then the water comes from that pond and you see this pipe there, that pipe, we, we make this water fresh also at the moment. But here is no no fish inside there. It's just the fresh, fresh water. No, no, no fish here. Fish is in other pond. This is just fresh water. Another area Mr. Ali is thriving in is no waste. Like he mentioned earlier, his farm goes full circle when it comes to waste management. Chicken uh, waste goes in the uh, uh, what you call with the vegetables and guavas and Water goes to them, so everything is just recycled. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you have in here? Uh, it's the goldfish here. Yeah. We okay. actually breed goldfish here. Yeah. This is the pond for the goldfish. Yeah. So like, we have uh, a lot inside here. Yeah. So uh, when they are about to breed, we take it out and leave it in the container. This is kind of lab for us. Okay. Uh, so we breed it here. Oh, yeah. oh good, good. Yeah. This is the breeders actually for the goldfish. Yeah, see you can see the eggs inside. Oh, okay. So this is surely very soon gonna yeah, give the yeah. <laughs> eggs okay. out here. Yeah. Okay. So then we'll breed it and leave it. So we're hoping once the pandemic is over to sell the goldfish. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Coming up after the break, we speak to the Ministry of Fisheries and learn about the kind of assistance they're providing tilapia farmers during this time. Welcome back to our final episode for this season. Now, when we talk about fish and Fiji's aquaculture farmers, uh, the Ministry of Fisheries is right there in the center of it all, lending a helping hand to as many farmers as possible. So tonight, we're speaking to Senior Fisheries Officer Toka, who's going to tell us more about the kind of assistance the Ministry is providing to Fiji's aquaculture. Aquaculture is one of the top priority for the Ministry of Fisheries at the moment, especially in this time of uh, pandemic. Eh? Uh, there's two, uh, two roles that aquaculture play at this time. Eh? One is uh, food security and the other is uh, income generating. Eh? So with those two uh, roles, 
the ministry has uh, uh, put in its, uh, its support towards this uh, aquaculture sector, especially on tilapia farming. Eh? So what ministry is currently doing at the moment in terms of aquaculture development is we provide technical advice. We have dedicated offices who visit our farms and uh, provide advice to them. Eh? Uh, on how to start the aquaculture farms. Eh? Also, we have a food security program that the government is, uh, it's, a, it's one of the subsidy program within the ministry that provide uh, assistance to farmers in terms of uh, finance. Eh? So with this, we help uh, farmers start, start their, their ponds, eh? constructing their ponds, and also assist in the phase cycle in terms of feed, and piping and whatnot. Eh? Also, we we have a few etcheries at the moment. We have one in Ba, we have one in Damboni, and uh, one in Nandurolo in Nausori and Ngalwa. Eh? So we provide the the fries for farmers, eh? the small tilapia, for them to grow to a marketable size and then and then selling it. Eh? And this fries is supplied uh, free of charge. Eh? So these are some of the programs that we have within the ministry that help support this aquaculture development, the whole of Fiji. Eh? At the moment, what fisheries is uh, moving towards now is uh, to form this uh, cooperative eh? or association for, for fish farmers. Eh? Uh, in the past, our farmers are working individually, but the ministry have seen the need to, for our farmers to work together. Eh? Not just uh, farmers to work together, but also farmers, Ministry of Fisheries, and our key partners eh, that, we, that uh, have interest in developing these fisheries. Eh? And one, uh, one example is the, the Nendi Cluster and also the uh, Tilapia Fiji Association. Eh? So this is, this is a good initiative for farmers. It will uh, definitely benefit them through sharing of resources, assistance, and also raising their concerns to, to the ministry and to the development partners. Eh? So that's where we, we're heading towards at the moment. Eh? Now you can always get in touch with the Ministry of Agriculture and the Ministry of Fisheries to learn more about government-funded assistance and advice. Now before I leave you, I want to share with you this moment that Mr. Ali shared with us when we went to visit his farm. They say there is no I in team and Mr. Ali and his team are a testament to that. So he is uh, the man who helped me to start uh, everything. Yeah, he is Mr. Lai. So with his knowledge I started off with things and like come with. Okay. And this is my son, you can, uh, Wes, who is helping me with everything like uh, my father used to do. And he's uh, Mr. Ali, Hafiz Ali. So all the digging and things, excavation, digger, like he, he is in the farm before me. Like I am sometimes uh, after six or seven here, but he makes sure he is uh, here just uh, before the sunrise. And like at times uh, in the night, uh, some issues there, he's just staying here, he comes in and to see everything. And then like uh, other my caretakers are here. One big thing is that uh, um, I cannot forget my father here. Like he was the one who gave me the power to start this. And he was looking, he was looking forward that a day something like this to come and like but i feel sorry that he is not here with me today but uh, from where he can see me inshallah all his blessing is with me and i will carry forward with all what it uh, all the dreams that was for him and i will inshallah continue with what he started with me he was with me here every morning like he was the one who used to be a, like I wasn't so, so punctual in the farm. Like three days, four days I used to come, but he was the one every day on the farm, like helping me and let's just to make him, uh, his health uh, uh, okay, looking after himself. And like he was happy being here, but just like um, three months ago, he left us peacefully. May, 
Allah give him Jannatul Firdos. Thanks very much. <laughs> to find out more about the FO for ACP project, log on to www.pacificfarmers.com. We really hope you've enjoyed our season three, and of course, none of this would be possible without our sponsors. Pifon, Pacific Island Farmers Organization, and they're awesome members that we featured throughout the series. Now we look forward to seeing you in season four. But until then, if you'd like to recap on any of our old episodes or learn more information, please feel free to head to our Facebook and YouTube pages. But until then, you gotta keep it green.